Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with serial entrepreneur, author, and keynote speaker, Matt Schaub. In March of 2005, Matt was laid off from a corporate banking job that he absolutely hated. Matt quickly founded M&E Painting with the last $100 he had to his name, all while being close to $200,000 in personal debt. M&E Painting grew quickly, and he has produced over $30 million in revenue since 2005. Matt and M&E Painting have received dozens of local, state, national, and even international business awards. We get into all of this and so much more. Enjoy this interview. Well, hey, Matt, it's great to uh, meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. So before we get into your life as an entrepreneur, author, and speaker, you're a busy guy. I want to know the last three years with COVID worked on all of us in different ways, and I'm curious how you survived that time period and how it changed the way that you live and conduct business now. Wow, you know that's a that's a great question. I haven't I haven't been asked that recently. Uh, you know, it was it was interesting. It was a challenging time for everybody, and I think what it did for me is that you know I had to make a really quick decision uh, at the very beginning of COVID. Is that you know I was either going to fall victim to it or be victorious over it. I saw so many people that used it as a whether you want to call it an excuse, a path to just kind of bow down, bow out, and um, be defeated. Or, hey, you know, we, we've got this in front of us. We need to change the way we look at things, do things. I have a responsibility to lead people and, you know, keep them in a very positive mindset. And, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that I survived, but I actually thrived during COVID. I had some of my biggest moments of growth, um, really committed down on some really big projects that I'd been putting off for a long time. But I think more importantly, was able to pull the, the team of people that I'm responsible for in my businesses through that. and. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the quick recap on it. I've got lots of different examples that we could talk about. And, you know, I wish more people would have done that when, when that happened. I think that's great. I really want a kind of an overarching philosophy of the way that you went through it and how it's affected the way that, that you live life now. But I want to get a better handle, too, for the audience as well on exactly what you do on a daily basis. So I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day at elementary school. <laughs> yes. And what we'll do is one of the kids will look up and say, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? So I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So the way I really break it down to a, to a basic level is I, I get to hang out with really fun people that I enjoy every day. I, I drink coffee all day, hang out with people, and my businesses find different ways to make their life better. So I, I have a company that does residential painting and roofing. We have a Brazilian jiu-jitsu academy. I also write business books and do speaking and uh, take entrepreneurs on uh, leadership retreats. So, you know, the big, the big commonality is um, I get to use my, my stories and my experiences to share stories with other people and give them resources to make their life better. What did you want to be when you were in the third grade? You know, I wanted to be a baseball player. That was like, that was my childhood dream. Um, never really, never really thought about the business thing. You know, I got bullied a lot growing up. So I was, I was pretty scared of the world. I didn't have a lot of tools and resources on how to deal with, you know, the bullying and the stuff that I went through. And business came up for me, uh, when I was 10, between fourth, no, fifth and sixth grade, I moved out to Colorado and uh, asked my parents for some money for a boom box, and they wouldn't give me any money. They said, figure a way to go make it yourself, kind of thinking that I'd stop talking about it, right? And I, I took the lawnmower out of the garage and went up and down the street and mowed lawns. So, you know, business for me really gave me a sense of identity, of purpose, of being able to set a goal and accomplish a goal, it gave me certainty, uh, gave me confidence that, that I really was lacking and couldn't find and didn't find anywhere else. So what were some of the other seeds growing up that were planted in you that made you, you're obviously highly motivated, highly driven. What were some other things as far as family and friends and anything else that was influential on you getting to where you are today? You know, it's really interesting. I grew, I grew up in a very interesting environment with, with kind of two different types of, of mindsets going on. You know, I did experience and spend time around a lot of people that uh, had that very fatalistic mindset, the world's out to get you, kind of that victim, not kind of, but that, that victimhood mentality of no matter what you do, you're never going to get ahead, somebody's always going to screw you, take advantage of you, 
but then, you know, I turned right around and jumped into the world of, of, you know, mowing lawns and shoveling snow. And I said, you know, this, this doesn't make sense because I just decided I wanted something and I went and attained it. And, you know, that's not how the world is. So, you know, those different influences from those different, you know, friend groups and just people groups and social groups was uh, was influential. I'd say one of the big ones for me, and this kind of influenced me in a few ways, is uh, my freshman year of college. I attended Colorado State University, and I got approached by a college painting company recruiter. And he, you know, came into a class and said, "Hey, you know, what are you going to do this spring and summer for work? Are you going to deliver pizzas, wait tables, work at a shoe store? Right? That's what I was doing. Um, How'd you like to learn about business, marketing, sales, use our company's money?" and, you know, get a once in a lifetime business experience. So I jumped in with those guys and that that group, that cohort of people really um, gave me a great perspective and mindset into business. You know, the company as a whole did a really great job of that. Um, I also ended up hanging out with a subgroup within that group. And this is not how the company represented themselves as a whole. These were just a couple of the people within that company. We were out making a lot of money. So, I mean, I was going out in college spending three times what I made and, um, you know, doing a lot of drugs, alcohol, chasing women, making some pretty poor personal decisions that, you know, eventually caught up with me. I ended up in the back of a police car one night. So, um, yeah, those those are some of the influences, some of the things that, that shaped me and were pivotal points in my story. Who would you consider a hero for you? A hero for me, man. You know, there's there's so there's so many. Um, there was a there was a gentleman in uh, college. He was a college uh, campus. I call him a campus pastor, campus minister. Uh, his name, sorry, his name was Brian. And um, you know, my my faith journey. I really didn't have one until college, and I went through a lot of things and, and found God in college. And he was just there. He was really. He was really consistent. He was there for me when I was making bad decisions, and he was always saying, hey, Matt, you know, when you're ready to talk about, about these things that you should be thinking about and exploring, I'm, I'm here for you. And um, just, you know, it's a guy that nobody would, would ever know, right? And uh, he, was just, he was just there for me. So if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now and talk to them, who would it be? One person alive on the planet right now. Um, you know, I, I really love and enjoy Tony Robbins. Uh, a lot of his work and what he's done has really impacted my life, and it would just be cool to sit down and, you know, share a meal, share a lunch with him, and uh, discover discover more just about his journey and path. You know who I recently, like, discovered, and I have teenagers at home, is have you ever heard about this YouTuber named Mr. Beast? I have, yes. Yeah, I've been seeing some of his stuff for a while. So if you haven't had a chance, Find one of his interviews and listen to how he's building his business and how he's doing it. He's been doing this since he was 11. He basically feeds all the money back into it. He has, mm-hmm. you know, food pantries. He has the chocolate bars in Walmart. He does the videos. It's fascinating. I, I, I find that's not how my, my brain doesn't work in a business way. So people like you and Mr. Beast and others operate in a different way. I'm more right brain. So it, it's fascinating to see how all of that feeds into itself, you know. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, so, I've seen his stuff come up, and he's been, I mean, he's, uh, what did he just turn down, was it like a billion dollars somebody wanted to buy his company for? I think yeah. that's what I read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just amazing how grounded he is. He, he reminds me of Buffett. Like, he was getting interviewed, and he talked about how he lived in an apartment split rent when he was making, like, hundreds of millions of dollars. He just didn't mm-hmm. feel like he needed it. He was driving an old car. And the house got broken into, so he said, I had to get a house to fortify my equipment, what I have. But he only did it because of that. So it's just, it's, it's fascinating how that works. And same thing with Buffett. You know, he lives in Omaha, same house he's been in for decades, still goes and get the same, gets the same breakfast at the same diner, still has the mm-hmm. same car. Those things just really fascinate me. And it's not that you have to go out and buy billions of dollars worth of things, but the people that really do just live genuinely like the regular people on the planet fascinate me well and it's really cool to see people that have been successful in business financially where they really see the value of, of contribution you know and then people poured into them invested in them and then they're turning around and doing that for and, and to other people and I, and I think that's the that's that's really the coolest part of business for me yeah and that's what is so fascinating about mr beast he's really doing good things for people um 
So I'm curious, every day you wake up, the alarm clock goes off, you look at what you have to do, you accomplish these things throughout your day. What is it that motivates and drives you through your days? Yeah, so, you know, one one of the things that I, I went through a process called the life plan process, gosh, back in <clears throat> 2015 or 16, and it's where you get a really clear perspective on your life story and the important parts of it and, and why you exist. And, you know, I wake up every day, especially in the business space, I want to share my story, inspire people, and make them, and, and ha- not make them understand, but have them realize that they can really own and live their life, their business with, with excellence, regardless of the circumstances that they've been through. And, you know, especially during COVID, thinking back to that first question you asked me, um, I, I just feel like I need to be a beacon of hope uh, and light for people in the entrepreneur and leadership space. So at the end of that proverbial day, how do you look back and quantify it as a good day? You know, some some things are not quantifiable, right? So obviously I have business metrics and KPIs. Did you, you know, did we did we sell books? Did I get my message out to more people? Things like that. You look at those things, but, you know, how do you quantify? Uh, I had coffee with a guy the other day, and he had watched one of my morning coffee videos on, on the social media, and he said, man, I watched this video and realized that I was really playing the victim, and I've been doing that for years, and I'm looking back at all of these experiences, and you know, he said, that's just, it made my life better. How do I quantify that? I, I don't know. I mean, I know it made his life better. I think we'll see in, in a decade if he continues on that uh, positive trajectory. Um, but that's, you know, that's what I look at. There's definitely some tangibles, but also definitely some, some intangibles. So if you had a dream tonight and the younger version of yourself, the 20-year-old version of yourself, you ran into it, and you could dispense some advice based on the wisdom you've gained, the paths you've been, been down, things you've overcome in your life, what would you say to that young person? Man, I would say I would say don't don't let your hurts, pains, traumas, and the people that let you down define you or hold you back from who you were, who you really are, and who you need to be. I would also say that uh, to you know lean, lean into your greatness and just remember that things are going to take time. They're going to take longer than you think. And I would just tell the younger version of Matt that I'm that I'm proud of you, and you're going to do you know you're going to do amazing things. Just Keep, keep stepping into adversity and discomfort as you continue in your journey. So what's been one of the best client responses, fan letters, so to speak, that you've ever gotten? Man, you know, I, I can tell you, um, if you give me a second, because I think I've got it. I've got it right here on my desk. I was speaking, I was speaking in Orlando at a leadership conference that a company was putting on, and this guy was falling asleep, like he was falling asleep and, and passing out. And I thought he was just real, real tired or <laughs> real uninterested. And it oh. turns out that he was, he was coming off of uh, some, some drugs, like he was detoxing from drugs and really trying to, uh, to get off of it. Didn't really say anything to me. He, he walks out and I'm like, huh, that guy's not interested. And he just slips me a note. He just puts a note on my pile of stuff. Um, and it's just, I'll read it to you. It says, Matt, I just want to say thank you, first of all, not just you, but several people have called me out and said, you have a story, something deeper and something you may have helped me get myself to where I want to be. Um, you know, what should change? I believe that you can, you can put a price on your service. Uh, let me just get to what he said. But he just said that he was, you know, he was in the past couple of days really feeling like a failure, really starting to pull back. And he was thinking of, you know, making some bad decisions. And, and I think circling around the fact that he was, you know, considering ending his life. And he just said that, hey, your story gave me hope um, for the future, and just thank you. And, and I don't think I, I didn't see him again after that. I didn't have a chance to follow up on his note, but that was that was pretty impactful. You know, I didn't think that what we were talking about within that business and leadership conference when I shared my story had impacted him that much. So when you look back on your life and think about everything you've done, what are you the proudest of? Uh, being a father and husband and, and family man. You know, I get to speak a lot in the business space, um, but, you know, all of the, the business that I do, obviously I have people to serve and team members to contribute to, but obviously uh, very, I'm very interested in, very focused on, and this is another part of my, my waking up every morning purpose, is really changing the trajectory of my family and my family tree in a lot of different ways. So setting just an amazing, positive, godly example and role model for my kiddos, um, teaching them and equipping them with the tools that I didn't have, didn't receive growing up. And, you know, that, that's my biggest accomplishment, um, way more, way more than all the business stuff. So everyone out there has a perception of you, your family, your friends, businesses, clients, um, customers, but ultimately you're the one in control of your life. 
What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? You know, I, I'm a strong. I'm a strong leader. I stand for fight, faith, family, action, accountability, giving, gratitude, love, service, kindness, and excellence. So I'm very, very clear on those values and what they mean to me and how I can go out and display those. And then I'll end that with great. Sounds good on paper, right? But I get it wrong every day. You know, like I'll I'll screw it up royally uh, in one of those categories literally every day. And just just being accountable to that and understanding that I'm human and I can give myself some some grace and space and forgiveness for that. Um, that's that's who I am. So, Matt, if anyone out there wants to learn more about you, hire you, anything related to your world, where do they go? Everything is on my website at mattshout.com. Beautiful, Matt. I'm glad we got this in, and it, it was wonderful to get to know you. Thank you, and keep doing the good work, man. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for reaching out and doing this, and uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Talk to you soon. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, business, spirituality, music, and more from around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm-hmm.